It's been about a year since we started fighting the county over their proposed land use codes here in Delta County, Colorado. And after we had a public hearing with between six and 700 attendees voicing their opposition to the intended land use code, the county commissioners have been going line by line, uh, finally reading the code and fixing some of the issues that we brought to their attention. Now, they were quite dismissive of our objections at the time. However, in private, they expressed some concern about having mobs with pitchforks out in front of their offices, which was probably a legitimate concern. If we look around the world right now, there are currently active farmer protests in the Netherlands, Scotland, Ireland, Germany, France, Poland, Belgium, Lithuania, Romania, Greece, Italy, Spain, and India, if not more, where farmers are uh, basically bucking against a lot of the uh, climate policies that reduce the use of nitrogen fertilizers, or like in Ireland where they're trying to cull over 200,000 dairy cows, and farmers are just done taking this nonsense and are standing up and meeting with some success in many of these locations. Now the work that our county commissioners have done on this code is not fantastic, but it's also not horrible. There is one particular issue that I intend to press with regard to how enforcement is carried out. Now the language at the beginning of this document and their public statements reflect a desire to have this be a complaint-driven enforcement environment. Now, I think that if we can uh, enumerate exactly how that is, we're going to actually do more to preserve our liberties than any change in the code would. Now, what I mean specifically is that if it is the county's position that they will only investigate and enforce code violations if there is a complaint that is written and non-anonymous, then I think that we uh, have a chance at protecting a lot of our freedoms. Now, if the county has the ability to go out and look for infractions without a complaint, then that opens up the possibility that this administration or future administrations could in fact use code violations as a means of generating revenue for the county. Currently, the code states that any fines collected on infractions shall be returned to the general fund for the county. So that leaves it open to being a quick way for the county to bolster its coffers simply by going out and looking for infractions. My personal thought would be that if we could have a separate fund where those fines would go, uh, for example, the fees to apply for various permits on uh, conditional use items are fairly high. In many cases, uh, $250, you know, for for a permit to do this, this or that. And if instead we could take any fines for violations and put them into a fund to offset those fees, that would be fantastic. Uh, I would also really like to see there be a mediation step before any fines are levied. So in other words, if someone has a complaint about what their neighbor is doing, before there be any uh, action taken by the code enforcer that there would be a mediator that would sit down with both of the concerned parties and see if a solution could be arrived at without going to the more coercive uh, uh, theft of a fine that uh, we might be able to solve 90% of those problems before they even become problems. So there are a few things um, to be concerned about. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Uh, my cow is, is bumping my tripod here, so sorry about that. But <laughs> to the actual code itself and to the previous code for anybody who's interested in going through it, it's about 220 pages or so. And a lot of that is um, tied up in 
nuances of uh, communication cell towers and survey specifications and things like that. But of the things that actually uh, pertain to us individuals living in this county, uh, there's not a tremendous amount in there. There have been some improvements over the previous code, particularly with regard to folks who want to live in an RV while they're building a place on their land. That has been extended to two years, and that's without um, being hooked up to a sewer and, and things like that. So you've got 24 months as either the owner builder or as a contractor to live in an RV on a property here in Delta County before you have to um, have a more permanent situation. Now you can live in an RV if it's hooked up to an approved septic system and with a licensed, approved, permitted electrical supply. And so that is a, is a pretty good improvement on that front. But there are still things in there. And I think that if we can get it codified that the county will only investigate uh, violations where there is a claimant who is unmasked that will prevent the county from using this code to harass the citizens or to generate revenue and so essentially what that would mean in practice is that whatever you're doing on your place if you're not bothering anybody and it's not having an effect on anybody else's property then you can carry on doing it and I think that would really make a big difference so the uh, meeting that's coming up on the 21st of February will be in the same location, the Performing Arts Center in Delta, as it was last time, and it's 5.30 in the evening. So I absolutely encourage everybody who lives in the county to come to that meeting. And even if you don't have anything to say yourself, just your presence and your voice in the crowd is a huge benefit. So everybody come on out bring your family numbers are really the most important thing in that situation we need these bureaucrats to realize that not only are we paying attention but we also cannot be cowed and that they would be wise to realize that there is a a large and committed uh, group of people within this region that are not just going to accept whatever nonsense comes down the pike and that we are going to stand up and fight for our rights in every way necessary and possible. So those who are interested in this issue follow along. We'll have some uh, content on this channel that comes out of that meeting, various speakers, and I plan to do a little speaking myself, so I'll try to get that in a follow-up video to this one. And really want to uh, thank and encourage everyone that has been engaged in this fight from the beginning. We've uh, learned a lot about how our county government operates and the uh, relationship between our county commissioners and the constituency versus uh, the state. It turns out that they're not really working for us. They are beholden to the wills of the state of Colorado and not so much the citizens of Delta County. So, um, you know, through this process, we've, we've made a lot of really good connections with other people who are like-minded in the county, and that's fantastic. But, you know, there's a, a, a definite need for us to pull together as individual citizens and improve our neighborly relations. I strongly encourage not only people in this county, but around the world to get out of your house, uh, get together with your neighbors, talk about, uh, you know, th threats to your, your community and understand your natural resources and develop action plans uh, amongst each other. Given certain scenarios that could crop up, it's just good practice to have those uh, sort of relationships with, uh, with the people that you live around. Delta County residents should also be aware of the fact that there are uh, elections coming up this November that will decide the fate of two of the seats on the county commissioners, two of the three. So District 1 in Delta is uh, not up for election this cycle but districts two and three are. And so uh, here in the, in the North Fork Valley district, 
uh, Wendell Kuntz is being opposed by another Republican candidate who is more in line with the land liberty objectives. Uh, and there is also an independent candidate running in this district. And uh, I think that either one of those gentlemen would be a, a better fit for the way we think around here. Also in the Surface Creek District, um, uh, Don Supes has uh, limited out, term limited out. And so the Republican Party will push the default candidate of their choosing. If there's anybody in the Cedar Edge, Austin, Orchard City area, who would be interested in running for that spot as well. I'm sure we could throw a lot of weight behind a candidate who is a, a little more of the Liberty mindset in that district as well. So uh, I encourage uh, everybody to uh, you know, get the word out and, and participate in this process, whether you're a voter or not a voter, just making your voice heard, talking to your neighbors, raising awareness, of the potential threats to our ability to use our land as we see fit all of that helps so thank you everybody who's been in the fight and those who have uh, contributed financial resources uh, i'll also put a link in the description to the alliance for land liberty website where there will be a way for you to contribute as well and also um oh man look at this Eagle and a couple of red wing black or uh, red tailed hawk having a little tussle. Um, but yeah, so we want to be free and we want to have the ability to take care of our farms, do the things that we need to do in the best way we see fit. And the bottom line is if uh, what you're doing on your farm doesn't affect anybody around you, there shouldn't be anybody to say that you can't do it. And so that's the kind of freedom that we're fighting for over here and encourage you all to uh, show up at that meeting and support however you can. And speaking of vermin, the folks over at xpest.com sent me this electronic rat killer to test out. It comes with a little indicator light extension if you're putting it somewhere you can't see. And this USB charger, once you charge it up, it'll operate for a few days and... This pad on the bottom, where the mouse will be, ends up arcing to an electrode on the side there, you can see on the left. So I baited her up with a little bit of ham. And then out in the barn I had found a rat's nest behind some boxes. So I took this rig out there and set it right there where that nest was. It took a couple of days, but boy, sure enough, a mouse came along and got himself zapped. So this works good. It's easy to empty. You don't have to touch the mouse or worry about injuring them. They also sent these mini ultrasonic uh, rodent deterrents. I'll put uh, links to both these products in the comments. Got you a 40% discount for a limited time on these. So snatch them up.